the Centre for Excellence Universal Design is part of the National Disability Authority, which is based in Dublin, Ireland. The three areas the centre covers are standards, education and awareness. The Centre for Excellence in Universal Design is, is the only statutory authority of its kind anywhere in the world. I think it's a testimony to Ireland that they have invested in, in building this capability. The centre was set up uh, under legislation in 2007. Its key aims is how do we create societies, our communities, that are fully accessible, uh, understandable, and easy to use by all citizens. Design is for everyone. It's a fundamental expectation that people have, that the buildings they occupy, the technology they use, the products and services they have access to, can work for them without needing special modifications, or without making them feel that in some way they're inadequate because the design doesn't work for them. The Universal Design Principles is a set of seven uh, design principles that are essentially design goals that are intended to inspire design thinking that helps to ensure that the output of the design process is going to be accessible and usable by all people. The thing that amazes me very often about asking students to design in universal design context is how much it improves their design but also how much it makes them aware that there are other people around. We've had categories for um, universal design excellence in the design awards for many years now and it's often you'll find that the ones that win that category end up being the overall winner of the entire show so that really I think speaks volumes about how much the principles kind of underwrite good design. Enterprise Ireland is uh, proud to work with uh, the universities in uh, the Universal Design Grand Challenge whereby designers across the country submit their universal design ideas for, for improved living, not just for people with disabilities but for everybody. It's a fabulous uh, resource for Enterprise Ireland because it's, uh, it provides not only uh, the impetus for new design ideas but it's an excellent testing ground for, for new companies coming through with, with ideas for universal design. We would introduce universal design uh, in any project, so we would also do domestic work from kind of adaptations to very, very large uh, new housing. And most clients come to you and they're just thinking about today. But to successfully design, you need to think about the long term because in five years time, that's going to have changed. They now have teenagers or children that are in college or working but still living at home, then they're getting older, they might become less able, less mobile, all of these things. So you need to start to think about the long term in any housing design or in any domestic work. ICT is one of the areas where universal design is most applicable and most visible. If we consider the technology that we use every day, such as mobile devices, these are really good examples of universal design. IT professionals need to be sure that they continue to develop their competence in universal design and there are many drivers for this that they'll come across in their professional careers. There's definitely a market need and a demand. So we work very closely with standards bodies at national level such as the National Standards Authority of Ireland and at European level. Working with the Centre for Excellence in Universal Design creates an environment where we can set out requirements for all our citizens so that they can access, understand and use tourism services and utility services in their daily lives. A lot of the work that we do in the centre is the development of design guidance. Uh, how do you get designers and built environment professionals to change? And from that we develop workshops where we invite along the end users such as uh, people from professional built environment bodies and people from our stakeholder groups. You could have a landscape architect talking with an engineer, talking with someone who may be a wheelchair user, talking to someone whose child may have autism. I think building for everyone, the, the box of books that the Centre of Universal Design released is excellent and it should be in every architecture office. Universal Design as a concept when it was developed was, I suppose the concept is primarily applicable to the construction and primarily, you know, say houses or buildings and making them suitable for everybody. I think it is spread out from that. That's been very welcome. We've seen, uh, particularly through the, the awards every year, you can see where students are taking that uh, sort of methodology or concept and moving into medical devices or software and other products. Literally, somebody in City Architects can pick up the phone to uh, somebody in the centre and have a chat about an issue. 
they'll give us an honest response and it'll help, it helps us make our projects better. If we're not designing our buildings and places for everybody, who are we designing them for? We're designing them for nobody. I can't think of any area where the principles that uh, underpin uh, universal design aren't appropriate and couldn't be applied. Because really what universal design asks us to do is to have emotional an emotional response to the needs of our learners, to the needs of our users. Now is the time to grasp universal design uh, in partnership uh, with the champions for universal design, the Centre of Excellence in Universal Design, and employ it from day one in all that we do. We need more resources to actually uh, progress universal design. Uh, we need to build capacity with engineers and when we talk about commitment we talk about bringing some passion uh, to the to this whole area of universal design which at its core is about equality.